how do you pick the people for the different topics? So, so we talk about it. You know, I got a staff, and we all sort of six months out think, who do we want? And everybody starts to surface the people who they cover and their special skills. And so Ashley Vance, who has known Mark Hurd for years and years, said, you know, Mark Hurd is a ninja when it comes to financial Yes. Finance. And so he said, he, he basically devised a sort of, you know, a, a taste test. He said, let's give him a blank anonymous financial statement and let's see how long it takes him to figure out what it is. It was brilliant. You took uh -huh. Smith & Wesson, yep. the gun maker. He didn't know it was Smith & Wesson. No. But, and but he within, nailed it. But within about 30 seconds. Yes. He had figured out exactly what it was. He had figured out the performance, and he was drilling down further and further. I mean, it was just incredibly Fabulous. impressive. Fabulous. I also like that Dick Costello of Twitter, the CEO, how to run a company like an improv group. Talks about his time in Chicago. It's just a great window into these people's personality and where they came from. Yeah, and, and that's sort of, you know, look, there's so many people in business who are known for one singular thing. But in fact, everybody takes some sort of scenic route to get to the place they are. And Dick Costello used to be in the improv scene in Chicago. And so when he got out, he was working with Chris Farley yeah. and Rachel Dratch and all these people. And it applies. I mean, the fact is, knowing how to deal with somebody who's instinctive and physical like Chris Farley, and then someone who is very sort of intellectualized like Rachel Dratch, he's, he's like, that's how I put my teams together. So that that actually is a management lesson. In a Interesting. Way. Charles Calamaris here, our guest host this hour with Columbia Business School. Uh, <laughs> Team Triangle goes after one Krugman of Princeton how to beat a dead horse, stimulus, 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 stimulus. He I mean, really believes it. Yeah, no, he believes it. Uh, I, actually, I read the article. I thought it was a very good article. It's kind of like, uh, what's that uh, uh, stream of consciousness kind of, <laughs> kind of talk? But, um, you know, I think Paul's a very effective writer, and on basic economics, he, he's often uh, on target. Unfortunately, he's a very selective writer in what he decides to beat a dead horse about and often more politically motivated. But that's what's so great about this issue, Josh, and that is he's willing to go out there and sort of make fun of himself and acknowledge the fact that he does this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think columnists in particular, they, they get a rap because you see this sort of 700-word distillation of their ideas every week. And, and I think his point in the piece is, I know how to find the opportunities to make my point. But when you sort of remove him from that context, you can also kind of talk about the fact that yeah, you know, you kind of have to really caricaturize yourself in some degrees to get your point across. Which is why he's so successful. Hugely successful. He understands commerce. He understands what people need to know. And, you know, like Friedman, th those guys are geniuses at just conceptualizing difficult things and giving you that one seed so that your takeaway is, ah, got the idea. Mm. Well, I love that it's Paul Krugman, and then it's kind of diversified. And there's, there's also people on here that Tom does not know at all. Don Ed Hardy, how to get rich with tattoos. First of all, it is not I'm possible that there weekend. are people here that Tom does not know. Oh, it's and, possible. And Tom Trust has me. tattoos underneath that. Yeah. Underneath. We all know what's going and, on. And right here. For sure Economics, wears... finance, and investment, it's a great mix <laughs> right here. Yeah, with a nice little rose. For sure he's not wearing Ed Hardy. I, no, I doubt that he is. But um, that's, again, we, we want to, you know, business is everywhere. And that's sort of what we try and do. We got a lot of words every week in this magazine. And so we try to find the places that you wouldn't expect and find minds that you wouldn't expect applying themselves to business and finance. And so I think we're successful at that. And then on the flip side, you take a guy like Dick Parsons, who we all know is a very brilliant CEO, really knows how to manage relationships. And he also has a vineyard and has four years. And so this is a guy who knows how to right. do it. And so we got him to tell us, how do you actually go about the process of surveying the land, <laughs> running a vineyard, finding the family? And Did Dick Parsons know? Oh, yeah. That's He's all over the land. He's deep Very this. cool. Oh, yeah. Very cool. I just randomly opened the magazine and got to one page that said, how to look like you know what you're talking about and how to modify your sleep schedule, which applies directly to us every single day. Right. So <laughs> we went to Tom first for how to look like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, But he, nice. of course... And then quality control. There's an entire section. For those of you on Bloomberg Radio Worldwide, must read an entire section on bow ties. But Josh, which one is your favorite how-to? I think Herds is my favorite, just because the guy is such a, a machine. The income statement. Yeah, and, and you really, you get a sense of skill so instantly. Uh, right. And it's a rare skill. So, and also, I and love the fact... And he was happy to do it. Oh, he's thrilled to do it. I mean, the, most people here do not need a lot of arm twisting. and Because when, when right. you go to somebody and say, listen... We know that you're brilliant at this one thing that nobody else really understands. It's not exactly a tough sell. Right. Josh, in the time that we've got left and how to, you have had huge success, award-winning success with Bloomberg Business Week. How do we save the magazine industry? I get magazines at home, and yet I hear newsstand sales really are challenging to say the least. For everyone listening and watching, are, are you in an industry that's a dinosaur? It's, a, it's an industry that could be a dinosaur in the sense that if you keep executing the same thing and expecting the revenue and the eyeballs to come back, you're in trouble. 
But what we've been trying to do is diversify and get to people where they are. And, and you know, there is great goodwill to a lot of magazine brands. But there are a lot of people who are just as comfortable looking at something in their hand, like this, instantly, mm -hmm. as they are waiting for something to come to their house. And so what we're trying to do is take what we do in the magazine and deliver it wherever the eyeballs are. And okay. we figure that we'll figure it out from there.